a motor that's about to crash. Let's fix it. All right, that horde noise you hear is the actual electric motor. The, the unit is pretty quiet. Um, this motor is a Chinese junk motor. We buy them as cheap as we can get them. And, uh, you know, electrically, we, this place is pretty high elevation and we get a lot of lightning strikes. And usually lightnings blow these things up before they wear out. This motor is only about six months old and the bearing should last for years and years and years. But, you know, whatever. The way we used to do this, of course the motors used to be cheaper, is we didn't typically work on them. If you, if you hired an electric company to come pick it up, you know, it's not the electric company, but the electric contractors we use, you know, come pick it up, haul it back to the shop and put bearings in it. It usually costs 500 bucks and that's usually about what a, you know, this is a 10 horse, 1200 RPM motor, about what they used to cost. It's not worth it. You know, that motor costs probably about 900 bucks now. And uh, this well makes three barrels. You know, it's a pretty good well, but it's not worth thrashing that motor. It's worth my few hours of my time. Anyway, this video is for my old field buddies, uh, you know, or if you're just interested in how, how one works, this is a, you know, not the best way probably to work on one of these motors. You know, the best thing is take it to the shop, use presses and stuff, but we're out here on the field. This is a, you know, 45 minute job. Take a hammer, knock it apart, not drive bearings back on it. Just uh, just get it done, try to make a living. So anyway, the first steps, I'm gonna roll the belts off of it and then uh, we'll, we'll tear this motor apart and I'll kind of explain what's going on when we get in it. Okay, we're on the other side of it here. Got the belts off of it. Let me zoom you in. First thing we're gonna do is pull this shiv off. This is called a QD style hub. It's tapered. So there's two pieces. <clears throat> it's got three bolts pulled together. You'll understand in just a minute. got two pusher holes so you run these bolts back in these two other threaded holes This is tapered, called a QD style hub. And uh, it fits to the taper in that shiv. So when you pull that shiv, bolt the shiv up, it clamps down on this. This has got a split and it clamps down. So to remove this, take your 99 cent Harbor Freight screwdriver, <clears throat> drive it in this slot to spread this. Now on the back of the motor, there's the fan guard. There's four bolts. You can see two of them here, two of them are down here at the bottom. Okay, next thing is pull the fan off. And about half the time you'll ruin these, but it doesn't seem to be a problem, especially if they're out here in open air plenty of you know air because of the wind blowing around them and stuff I guess. A lot of times the rebuilt motors you buy don't even have these installed. But it's just got a snap ring. Of course I don't have any snap ring pliers. Remember I'm not saying this is the best way to do this. I'm just saying this is the easiest in the uh, sort of old field style. Alright, then this fan should just pop off with a screwdriver behind it. Yeah. Like I say, about half the time you destroy those. We got lucky. All these motors are made a little bit differently. <clears throat> these three bolts are a bearing retainer. A lot of times these motors will only have a retainer on one side. 
uh, like the, the, the fan side here, this, this bell that comes off, you'll see in a minute, it's just got a, a, a machine sort of pressed in slot. It doesn't have anything to actually capture the bearing. Either design is fine, but first step is to uh, pull these bolts out. This little cover should pop off. Uh, then we can pull these end bell deals off. You can pull them out of the fan side, but at this step, leave them in the drive side. <clears throat> the next step is to pull these four big bolts out of the other side. Let me just puzzle that real quick. You can see this end bell has got a split right here. It's the same on the other side. We'll go ahead and sort of break this loose and get it to move. Yeah, this is going to move easy. Now just take your hammer. Like I say, this isn't the best way, but this is the way to feel. Just drive on this shaft, and you'll push this bearing, the rotor, and the intel, and everything out the other side of the motor. We'll go ahead and pop this end bell off. At this point, you want to inspect the stator and the rotor. When these bearings go bad, obviously they get slack in them. And this is no longer perfectly centered in the stator. The rotor is not perfectly centered. And what will happen, and you can see this one just started, the rotor will start contacting the stator. See, there's a, there's a pretty bad spot. If you get much contact, it'll make a hot spot. And you can see how close the windings of the wires are. To this surface and you'll actually melt this little piece of plastic and you'll get the windings hot enough that that you'll cause them a short they'll they'll melt together uh if you look right in there you can see this was contacting it between here and here obviously this is the way the belt load pulls and there's all this little fine metal powder in here we're going to pull these three screws Now then, I just take a hammer, put your set of safety glasses on, drive these things off there. You'll have to chase it around when you pick up a little bit. Water break, it's like 11 o'clock, it's already 200 degrees. Now in most motors, the uh, the, the bearing on the, the drive side is larger, it's physically a bigger bearing. This motor, they were the same, I'm really not sure why. <clears throat> now I know somebody's gonna be going, man, you need to take that in and the press, you can't hammer on bearings like that. Well. I know, but this isn't the $500 way to do it, to hire your contractor. This is how you do it in the field. Oh, this is actually going pretty easy. Next step, you want to take the, you put the, uh, only the bearing on the drive side. You want to put your end bill back together on the drive side. And I guess you realize that the bolts go through this case and contact this. This is actually what's threaded. 
Now you want to take your fully charged 600 foot pound DeWalt impact and full send it on these bolts. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Now then take your other end bell. This is a non-drive side, typically smaller bearing, so this one's the same. And go ahead and assemble it. Now take this end bell the fan side and go bolt it back on the fan side of the motor. You don't want to get those super tight because you'll break the little tabs off. So next I'm going to stuff the rotor in, it goes in from the other side, and we'll just push the shaft through this bearing, and, the, and the, the fan end shaft is usually not that tight. As I've said ten times, it's usually smaller. Take your block of wood or a hammer, knock that in. Typically the bolts will be long enough that you'll be able to start these end belt bolts. Of course this one isn't. You don't want to get too rough with that because you will break that in the bell. Let's run it and see what it sounds like. Stick the fan back on. Pop the snap ring back on the fan. Fan guard. you enjoyed the video as you can tell it sounds much better the bearings cost me about 45 bucks you know I got an hour in it I guess something like that not too bad if you like the video you want to see more stuff like this give it a thumbs up subscribe share it whatever appreciate it catch you next time <laughs>